Hello, well today I want to run through the incredibly complicated world of choosing leather sewing machine needles. And I'm going to keep this really simple actually and just refer to a few charts but show you a few examples as well. Because when I started selecting needles for various different tasks and threads for different tasks on my machines I found it really confusing. And I really frankly concluded the best way after a bit of internet research was to use trial, trial and error largely. But let, let's, let's just sort of kick off with one or two little pointers first of all. First point is not all leather sewing machine needles are the same. Okay, They all tend to have chisel points so that they pierce the leather. Now this is different to fabric sewing machine needles that tend to have round points and don't actually cut the fabric in the same way. But leather ones, and I'll show you a close up in a minute, actually have like knife points. So they are different and you do need to, if you're sewing leather, get proper leather sewing point needles. Next point to say is that the needle tips, there's a whole range of tips you can get. So you may think they're all the same, but actually there's um, like diamond points, narrow diamond, long diamond, chisel points, reverse twist points, depending on how you want your stitches to lay on the garment or on the bag or whatever you're making, you, you do need to select the right kind of point to the needle. And again, in a minute, I'll show you a few little examples of that. And then the next thing you need to do is actually consider the thickness of your needle for the application. And that is really determined by the kind of thread you're using. So. Again, there are lots of charts on the internet where you can choose the best thread and the best needle combination. And I'm not going to go into this in any depth because frankly, again, it gets complicated. There are um, Singer needle systems, American needle systems, European needle systems, and ditto with the thread. It just, there's a whole wealth of information out there, but it can get very complicated. What I will do though in a minute is show you a few examples of how to select thread and match it to a needle. So I think there's some good practical steps. In terms of internet resources, I mean, just to show you one or two, I've got here the needle and thread chart for sewing machines by Toledo Sewing, quite a useful one. It's got the different thread types, um, metric, US needle types and thread sizes and everything on that one. Another one, um, College Sewing UK. There's a lot of information on their website. I'll hasten to add, I'm not sponsored by any of these. Um, but they have here, just on this one sheet, which I tend to keep in the workshop, all the different needle types and sort of points and different stitch patterns you can get depending whether you want your stitches to be angled or straight or layering or whatever. So college sewing, go on to the needle manufacturers. So this is Schmetz needles as another one. And there's chart upon chart again of different needle types and giving you the anatomy of a needle and all the different facets of a needle. So you really can <laughs> get quite sort of involved. And this is another one. This one is, I think it's Gros Beckett needles, which is, gives you more information. But let's actually just boil all of this down with one or two practical examples. I think if I show you one or two you'll get a good idea of what I'm sort of suggesting and it will help you when you come to choose a needle and choose thread for a sewing project. One of the first things you need to decide is what thickness of thread you're using. So just as an example for bag sewing I use bonded nylon thread and I find it's the European sizing that NM40 is very good. Now, the best way really of testing it is to stitch some seams and then try and destroy them and see what breaks. But you soon get an idea about which thread to use. You don't want to use really thick and clumpy threads unless you need to. So having decided on the thread, whatever thickness it may be that you want, then the next thing is to match your needle to the thread. Now, if you look at a sewing machine needle, very closely you'll see there's like a channel going down it and the thread sits in that so when the needle pierces the leather the thread isn't getting damaged and you want the thread to sit in that channel just so it's loose enough to go down happily but not so that it's rattling around 
So this is actually quite a thick needle. This is what's called a 160 and then 160 is 1.6 millimeters thick. So it's quite a thick needle. And if I take this thread and put it in the channel there, and you'll probably struggle to see this so well on camera, but it's a fairly loose fit. Too loose a fit. So if I was using a, a thinner thread like this, I would actually want to use a thinner needle like this one. And this one's a NM120. I'll just find a channel, there it is. It's a smaller channel. So there's the channel and it's quite a bit narrower. So our NM120 needle is 1.2 millimeters thick and the channel is actually quite a bit smaller. So there we are, I'll try and place the thread in that channel and hopefully you can see just about that it goes up and down that channel quite happily but it's not really slopping around. One could take it down a bit more but that's not a bad match. And if ever you get a needle and you wonder what size it is, if you're using the European system, you can just get a, a measuring gauge. So I said this was a 120. And there you are, 1.2 millimetres thick. It's a 120 needle. So I say, look at that groove, put your thread up and down, you'll soon get an idea as to the size. So that's my first, if you like, tip in terms of sizing your thread to your needle. So to show you the difference a needle point can make, I've got here an RTW, a reverse twist needle in the machine, and I'll run through some white thread and it will give you a slightly slanted stitch, if anything. I'll write RTW at the end of that. So we know that's the reverse twist needle. I'll do the same thing now with a diamond point needle. So I've now put a diamond point needle in the machine. Same leather, same thread, and we'll just run a, a line of stitches down. And I'll show you the difference. So here you have the two layers of stitching. They don't look that different at first glance. If you look a bit more closely, you'll see that the diamond point one, the stitches are like in a straight line, just going through. Whereas in the reverse twist, the stitches are actually at a very slight angle. Now that will be more pronounced with larger stitches and with thicker thread. So I'm using quite small stitches here and a smaller thread, which is what I use for bags. But it still does give you a difference and it's just worth noting really if you're trying to get a particular effect in your leather stitching then it's worth choosing your needles carefully and going through the manufacturer's charts and choosing a needle that's best suited for what you're doing. So there you are, I actually have quite a lot of needles and that's just for two of my machines, the different types. So I hope anyway that film's given you a bit of a flavour of it's worth looking at your needle type, your thickness of your needle, your thread to needle combination and the desired stitching effect that you want. And I say there's lots and lots of information about this on the internet so it's worth having a bit of a general look there as well. Anyway thanks very much for watching, bye bye.